Hello there, my name is Yorkie and welcome to episode 7 of the in-depth track guide series for Assetto Corsa Competizione, a series where we go through each circuit, breaking it down corner by corner, giving you all the juicy knowledge, tips and information that you need to learn each track properly and improve your lap times. So if the series is of interest to you and you are new here, then please consider subscribing to the channel with the bell notification so you won't miss out on any future episodes. And if you want to support the channel further, you can find links to my social media pages down in the description below, as well as a link to my Discord server where it will be awesome to have you come in and join the growing community. So if you haven't already guessed by the background footage of the car driving around the circuit, today's episode is going to be on Spa-Francorchamps in Belgium. The circuit's length is 4.35 miles which equates to 70 kilometers and the track consists of 19 corners. The setup that you're going to be wanting to use is going to be low to medium downforce with medium to hard suspension and then you can see a number of key action areas here so there's plenty of opportunity to overtake around this circuit just make sure that you take note of these turns so you can plan your moves in advance. So starting with the pit entry, the actual entrance to the pit lane is just on the outside of the final turn on the circuit. You're going to have to thread your way between a set of narrow barriers where you get a short straight to accelerate before you have to slow the car down before you get to the pit speed limiter and gauge line. This is where it is currently situated right next to this marshal here and there is also the pit in board with the speed limit identified there as well so make sure you're slowed down and have the limiter engaged for this point. The actual pit lane itself is extremely long as it consists of both the GP pits where you will then have to navigate through this hairpin here which you can take full throttle while still being engaged on the limiter. You'll just have to put enough steering lock on to make it through and obviously make sure that you avoid clipping the barriers on either side. Then once you've come through here you'll continue to trundle on down the pit lane on the limiter down through the endurance pits and it's not until this point here at the bottom just before we get to Eau Rouge that we come to the point where we can disengage the pit limiter and start to accelerate out the pit lane. As we climb up the hill you will need to lift slightly for the right hander at the top there. You want to follow the right hand barrier around the outside of the runoff area for Radion and then obviously merge out onto the circuit while sticking within the white line to avoid any of the racing traffic that may be coming up behind and passing you. So moving on to the next part of our track guide and actually taking a look at the various corners around the circuit. This is the braking zone here for turn one where you're going to be braking at the 100 meter board and shifting the car down into first gear. We're going to be taking the car from the left hand side of the track and in towards our apex using the camber here to try and maximize the speed through the turn and focus on the best exit possible. You can hook up the inside curb here in both the dry and wet conditions. It may give you some slight track action loss just as you're starting to apply the throttle but a trade-off to that is that you're making the corner a little bit shorter for yourself and then when coming out through the exit you've got a sawtooth curb here which you can use in the dry conditions but avoid in the wet and then just beyond it we've got a yellow sausage curb that runs the entire length of the curb as well as some astroturf which you'll be wanting to avoid both if you possibly can in both the dry and wet conditions. Coming down the hill we come into the most famous corner around the circuit Eau Rouge where we'll be wanting to try and take as much of the curb on the inside here as possible to try and open up the following right hander Radion. This is completely flat out you can use plenty of curb go cautious of using that curb during the wet conditions but turning into the right hander you can take this flat out in a number of cars in some cars you may need to lift a little bit just to make sure that you go in towards the apex you want to stay off off the inside sawtooth curb that is there in both the dry and wet conditions this is such high speed and it will unsettle the car and lead you into the spin then coming out over the top of the hill out the exit of Radion coming through the left hander you'll be wanting to straight line this as much as possible and keep that steering angle nice and shallow as too much will scrub off the speed coming out the top there and you can actually cut a fair amount off on the inside as well providing that you keep at least two wheels on the red and yellow curbing that is there at the top of the hill then coming out through the exit again you want to try and keep the steering angle nice and shallow to maximize the speed and momentum coming off the corner and out onto the Kemmel straight obviously you can run the curb in the 
dry conditions just be very very cautious when driving in wet conditions and touching this curve you definitely want to be avoiding the astroturf that's there on the outside at the end of the Kemmel Strait, we've got Le Combe Chicane, and this is going to be turn five. We're going to be braking at the 100 meter board, basically right at the start of the curbing there on the left hand side, shifting the car down into second or third gear as we turn into our apex. This is where we're going to be aiming to hook it up, is on the inside curb here. You can use the painted tarmac area that's there on the inside. There is also grass creek as well, just on either end of it that you can use to your advantage but we then come into turn six where again we'll be wanting to use the curb that is here we can actually straddle the curb a little bit if the car setup allows you to do so and you want to try and sacrifice the exit a little bit you don't want to be getting on the throttle too early here and running out too wide because you want to be bringing the car back as far left as you possibly can to then open up turn seven Malmody where you're going to take the corner in third gear hook up the apex just here you actually want to be staying off the inside curb here if you possibly can because it can quite easily unsettle the car and then as you come through the corner you want to be getting hard on the accelerator for the short straight coming out through the exit and the exit curb itself is quite large and quite smooth and flat so you can run out nice and wide out here you just have to maintain at least two wheels on the red and yellow curbing that is out there so use that to your advantage in the dry conditions obviously stay off it as it will cost you the traction in the wet conditions coming down the hill into turn eight we're going to be on the left hand side of the circuit and we're going to be looking for our breaking point at the start of the red and yellow curbing that is there on the outside side we're going to be braking hard and pointing the car directly to the first of our two apexes here in this Brussel hairpin and we're going to be shifting down into second gear this is the first apex that we're going to be hooking up fairly early on in the corner we're then going to let the car run a tiny little bit deep through the mid part although we do want to try and hug the inside curb as much as possible and then hook up a second late apex where we're going to start to bring the throttle back in however you'll want to be smooth and patient as it's quite easy to spin the car coming out the exit of the turn if you get on the throttle too early and too aggressively. The actual exit curb itself is slightly serrated with an area of astroturf beyond it. Ideally you want to be getting fairly close to the exit curb without actually touching it. You can run it in the dry conditions but obviously stay clear of it in the wet conditions. But we then very quickly want to pull the car over to the right hand side of the circuit to open up turn 9. The braking zone for this corner is going to be very very short so it's going to be a short gentle stab of the brake where we're going to be dropping or keeping the car in third gear and then floating it in towards our apex where again we will be wanting to get as close to the inside curb as we possibly can without actually touching it. In the dry conditions you can run it in some cars although generally it tends to bounce the car out wide or generally unsettle the car and then obviously in the wet conditions you'll be wanting to avoid it entirely. Coming out through the exit, in the wet conditions you'll be wanting to avoid this curb entirely to maximise the traction on the run down the hill. However, in the dry conditions you can make full use of this curb and you can run pretty far out wide as well, providing that you keep two wheels on the red and yellow curbing that is out there. But maximising the exit here will give you a good run coming down the hill into Puan and this is going to be our braking zone here. It's pretty difficult to find a reference point around here but some people generally tend to use the red photography gate that is there cut into the fence on the right hand side of the circuit. Others like to do it by fill but we're going to be dropping the car down into fourth gear and then turning the car in for our apex here on the inside. Generally in both the dry and wet conditions you want to be avoiding the inside curb here on the first part of Puon but you want to be getting as close to it as you possibly can. As we come through the apex you want to gradually start to bring the throttle back in but don't get too aggressive on the throttle because it will run you out a little bit too wide coming out through the exit which is then going to compromise turn 11 the second part of Puon. So this exit curb on the outside here between turns 10 and 11, ideally you don't want to be venturing out this far wide to be touching the curb. You can run it in the dry without it unsetting the car, obviously you want to avoid it in the wet conditions. 
but if you find yourself actually going out over this curb then you're going to be too wide for the second part coming through our apex of turn 11 the second part of Puon and this is the apex point that we're going to be hooking up here on the inside again you want to be staying just off the inside curb avoid touching it in both the dry and wet conditions but this second part should be pretty much completely flat out you just want to try and keep the steering angle going quite nicely through the corner and then when we come out through the exit this is where we're going to let the car drift out wide we can make full use of the red and yellow curbing that is out here providing that we keep two wheels on that and then obviously in the wet conditions we'll be wanting to avoid it pretty much entirely to avoid any traction loss the next corner that we're going to be coming into is going to be turn 12, the entrance to Lafania Chicane. And this is our breaking point here, just as we pass underneath the bridge and just as we're getting to the white line that starts there at the red and yellow curbing. We're going to be hard on the brakes, dropping the car down into second or third gear as we turn through the apex, clipping the inside curb here. You can run up onto the curb and make use of the painted tarmac that is there on the inside in the dry conditions you'll be wanting to avoid doing this in the wet conditions but you want to sacrifice getting on the throttle coming through to try and hold the car towards the middle of the circuit to then open up our apex and our run through turn 13 the second part of the Lafania chicane again climbing up the curb on the inside in the dry conditions to clip this apex point here and avoiding running the curb in those wet conditions to avoid any potential grip loss and leading the car into a potential spin. As we come out through the exit, just like a number of other exit curbs here at Spa Francorchamps, in the wet conditions you'll be wanting to avoid this exit curb, but in the dry conditions you can run out nice and wide out here providing that you keep two wheels on that red and yellow curbing. We then come into the braking zone for turn 14, Stavolo where we'll be jumping hard onto the brakes on the left hand side of the circuit just as we're getting to the red and yellow curbing that is here on the left hand side at the entry. We're going to be dropping the car down into second or third gear depending on what the car prefers coming through this corner. You'll be wanting to stay just shy of the inside curb. You can brush it and run it in some cars. Some cars will prefer you to stay just off the curb and get as close to it as you possibly can. But as we come through this apex we're then going to bring in the throttle run the car out nice and wide again you want to make full use of the red and yellow curbing out here keeping two wheels on that curbing but running as far left as you possibly can in the dry conditions avoid it in the wet but you're going to run this curb pretty much all the way along before we come into the entry for turn 15 where we're going to get a short spike in grip as we drop off the curb and come in towards our apex so make use of that to hook yourselves into the corner quite nicely you want to avoid running the inside curb coming through turn 15 here as that will push the car further out wide you want to be taking the corner pretty much completely flat out and then as we come out through the exit to try and maximize the speed momentum off the corner you want to be unwinding on the amount of steering lock that you're putting in to avoid scrubbing the tires and again you want to avoid running this outside curb in the wet conditions but in the dry you can run pretty far out wide here providing that you're keeping the two inside wheels or the two right hand wheels on that red and yellow curbing and that will give you a nice run coming down along the next fast section of the track. We then come into Blanchemont, the very fast left-hander. You're going to need total commitment here. You can use the green runoff painted tarmac area that is there on the entry to try and open up the corner as much as possible. You should be able to take the corner completely flat out, aiming to hook up the apex just here on the inside, just off the inside curb. In the wet conditions, you will need to lift a fair amount, maybe even possibly brake and drop down a gear to make it through the corner. And then coming out through the exit, again, you want to try and carry the speed and momentum through and off the turn so you're therefore going to run out nice and wide here keeping two wheels on the red and yellow curbing and not venturing too far out wide in the wet conditions avoid this curb entirely we then come to the end of the lap with two corners to go and it's going to be quite a big heavy braking zone here an ideal opportunity to overtake we're going to have the car situated kind of towards the middle-ish left of the circuit where they're going to be getting hard onto the brakes roughly around 150 meters before the corner just after the white line that spans the width of the track 
and we're going to point the car to the curbing that is there at the entry on the left hand side of the track before we get ourselves down into first gear and turning in towards the apex of turn 18. The apex point is going to be on the red and yellow sawtooth curbing that is here on the inside. You can run this in both the dry and wet conditions. Just avoid touching the large red sausage curb that is there on the inside. We're then going to give a short spurt of the throttle between turns 18 and 19 before decelerating the car again, maybe giving a very short stab of the brake but we'll then hook up our final apex just here on the red and yellow sawtooth curbing on the inside. Again, you can run this in both the dry and wet conditions. Just be careful that in the wet conditions that you're not picking up the throttle a little bit too early and therefore costing the traction on the exit. Also, you will obviously want to avoid the red sausage curb that is there on the inside as well. Coming out through the exit, in the wet conditions you'll be wanting to avoid this exit curb entirely. In the dry conditions you'll want to be a little bit cautious with how much exit curb you actually end up using. You don't want to take too much because that will cost you some of the traction coming off of this turn and therefore compromise your line to the start finish line. So that's a look at all the corners here at Spa Francorchamps. Let's now actually jump into the car and take a look at the lap at full racing speed. So having set a fairly solid lap on a near default setup, I just want to finish the episode by saying that all the brake markers and apexes that you have seen here and the amount of curb use that you can use is going to depend on the car and conditions that you are obviously driving in. As I mentioned, you've got the dry versus the wet conditions and some curbs you can take in the wet, however other curbs you need to avoid or be cautious with. But obviously depending on the setup and also the actual car that you're driving, some cars handle curbs a little bit better, some are able to brake a little bit harder and later than other cars as well. So please keep that in mind as you're lapping around the circuit and taking everything on board here. 
If you enjoyed the episode though, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel as well. And as I mentioned, social media links and links to my Discord server are down in the description below. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. But until then, have fun, stay safe and take care.